Hello, everyone. Welcome to our joint committee with the Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism and our good friends from the Committee on Agriculture and the Environment. We're on our three o'clock agenda where many of us are here in room uh, 224. And we have one item on this particular agenda. And oh, sorry, I have to do some housekeeping announcements. Uh, this meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being streamed live on YouTube for your sheer enjoyment 24 hours of the day. You will find links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video pages of the legislature's website. And in the unlikely event, we hit some technical turbulence and this hearing takes a nosedive. The committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at three o'clock on Wednesday, February 17th. If that uh, does occur, a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. And for those who are participating remotely, I uh, wanted to let you know all testifiers audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it is your turn to testify. So now that we all know the rules of engagement, we are going to go to Senate Bill 167 relating to the state plan. First on our testifiers list is Danielle Bess from the Office of Planning. Aloha chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee. My name is Danielle Bass, State Sustainability Coordinator representing the Office of Planning here today. Mahalo for hearing this measure and uh, happy L Lunar New Year to all of you. Uh, the Office of Planning wants to stand on our, on our testimony in strong support of this measure and we find it complementary to the newly established statewide sustainability goal or programs as well as the objectives and responsibilities of the state's Greenhouse Gas Sequestration Task Force, which is administratively attached to the Office of Planning. I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Mahalo. Thank you, Daniel. Gung hee fa choi to you. Uh, David Smith from DLNR. Hi, good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Uh, David Smith, I'm the administrator with the Division of Forestry and Wildlife, and we'll stand on our written testimony. We're all in on this, uh, strong support. Thank you, David. Heather McMillan from DLNR as well. Aloha, Heather McMillan, urban and community forester with DLNR. I am secondary in testimony. Um, as Dave just expressed, we stand on our testimony in support of this. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. We have supportive testimony from the Department of Health, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, Sherry Pollack, Fern Anui Nui Holland, Ruda Jordans, Ted Bollum, and Melody Aduha. All of those individuals have submitted testimony in support. Members, do you have any questions for the three people we have online? No? Great, Bill. Okay, uh, that's it for me. And I'm gonna switch over to my pal, Senator Gabbard. If you have to gavel out and then I will gavel in for you if you don't mind, Senator Gabbard. Actually, no? you have to play by the rules chair. You gotta wait till 3.05. Otherwise we might get in trouble. Okay, it's entertainment time. <laughs> <laughs> don't sing, please. Okay. <laughs> But, but then you're the most talented person in the world. We can brainstorm on some green infrastructure ideas. <laughs> a one eyed man is a king. <laughs> oh, they're too efficient. My three or five agenda. Thank you. Steve. Chris. Okay, we're all good. Okay, I'm gonna grab in for if you don't mind. Okay. okay. How are you? All right. Are we in, Matt? Are we good? Uh, five, four. Three, two, one. Okay, calling to order the joint AEN EET uh, 305 agenda. It's Friday, February 12th. Uh, let's see, we have three measures. Uh, if for some reason I won't go through all the housekeeping announcements, I will mention that if for some reason we don't get to outstanding business, uh, AEN will reconvene at 1.44 p.m. on February 17th. 
during our regular AEN video conference time slot. And so we'll start off with SB 335 relating to agriculture, requires the Department of Ag and Agribusiness Development Corporation to annually lease at least 50% of land leased or up for lease, renewal to operations, whose primary business is local food production beginning July 1st, 2022, and it requires the Department of Ag and the Agribusiness Development Corporation to submit reports to the legislature on leasing activities. Okay, first up, we have uh, Jimmy Nakatani from ADC. Can you hear me, Senator? Yes, we can't okay. see you. I see you though. I don't, I don't know what happened. I've been having problems all day over here. Okay, go okay. ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Senator and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Jimmy Nakatani, and uh, um, I appreciate the, the intent of the Senate Bill um, 335. Um, just some comments, um, you know, I, I think for us is that leasing uh, for, you know, for food crops is a priority for our leases. And, you know, that's a requirement. I mean, we always look at, um, you know, a priority for, for our leasing as, as food priority. Um, farmers, you know, needs to be, you know, all farming business is a business, so it needs to be economically viable. And the 50%, I'm just concerned that maybe down the future, in the, on the, you know, in the future, um, like hemp is sticking, you know, you know, get, gaining traction, and if hemp becomes an industry, I don't know how that clogs that, but um, it's not a problem for a while. I mean, you know, most of our leases are in, in food crop production, and um, I just think that you know other crops like nursery products, although we don't have any on our land, um, might be affected you know, statewide. And I'm not sure that um, if we get more land or anything like that, that you know nursery products would be something for us. And the, the last comment is that, you know, I know everybody wants you know, sustainable agriculture here, feed the local people, and that's our goal. Um, I just think that, you know, at some point in time, we need to balance that with exports, because exports brings in money um, and funds like that to support our agriculture industry. And export will certainly let our agriculture grow. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Next, Phyllis Shimabukuro Geyser from Department of Ag. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Gabbard, Morisata on behalf of the Department of Agriculture. The department uh, will stand on its testimony um, opposing the bill and for the reasons stated therein, primarily that um, mandating 50% uh, food, 50, 50 food production on all of uh, its lands um, may uh, have contrary impacts to, to some of our non-food production uh, producing uh, farmers. Thank you. Okay, next up is Beth Tokioka with the Kauai Island Utility Cooperative. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, we have submitted testimony in opposition, but we've also suggested an amendment that would address our concerns. So very briefly, our concern is related to the West Kauai Energy Project, which is a solar pump storage hydro project that uh, we are um, have been de in development for a number of years and it will be the first of its kind in the world. When it's completed, it'll meet up to 25% of our energy needs and it'll bring KIUC to more than 80% renewable. So it's a very, very important project for us. It involves not just the construction of the renewable facilities, but also significant improvements to lands owned by three different state agencies We'll be rehabilitating and upgrading three reservoirs and the associated ditch systems and delivering irrigation water to both Department of Hawaiian Homelands and ADC once the project is complete. We'll also be restoring and maintaining the required stream flows in the Waimea River and its tributaries. So a critical component of this project is a solar plus battery facility um, that would provide the energy that would pump the water from the Mana Reservoir at the bottom up to Pu'uopai Reservoir during the day where it would be stored and then it would be released overnight to create the hydropower. Um, we've been in negotiations with ADC for many years on this parcel, uh, finding an appropriate piece of land for the solar field adjacent to the Mana Reservoir. And we finally landed on a site that ADC, you know, feels would have minimal impact to their agricultural needs. It's a site that hasn't been used in many years and it's not 
optimum for cultivation. So we're kind of getting to the end zone here of, of um, realizing that lease with ADC for that parcel of land. Um, and uh, we need to make that happen in order for the project to happen. It just, we just don't feel the project is feasible without that solar field. Um, so it'll also provide a revenue stream to ADC. So we basically proposed an amendment. Beth, I'm, Beth, Beth, I'm sorry, I've got to cut you off. Okay, thank minutes. you very much. Thank you very much. Next is uh, Irwin Quinanola from Food Plus Policy Internship at UH West Oahu. Thanks, Senator, they're not present. Not present, okay. Ann Frederick from Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, Ann Frederick on behalf of the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action. Um, Hapa will stand on our testimony in strong support. And we just wanted to highlight um, a few reasons why we think this measure is important. Um, ADC's vast land holdings are located on the west side of Kauai and the majority of those tenants currently are um, agrochemical seed companies who um, have had, you know, residents have, have longstanding concerns with some of the adverse impacts um, related to um, the use of restricted use pesticides adjacent to homes and other sensitive areas. Um, more recently, um, issues of water hoarding and waste, which led to a contested case at the State Water Commission. And then in 2019, a, a Clean Water Act violation um, due to the illegal discharge of pesticides from tenants on ADC land. So we feel that this is an important measure to, um, to utilize more of that land for um, the public good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Next is uh, Clayton Kubo. Hi, Senator, they're not present. Thank you, Matt. Uh, okay, members, uh, questions. I'll start off the questioning with, uh, for Jimmy Nakatani. Jimmy, uh, this, bill sure. this bill directs ADC to focus on local food production. And as we all know, uh, ADC recently uh, received the results of a very unflattering audit. So my question is, how is ADC going to improve and are you willing to fulfill the mandate in SB 335 if it, bec if it becomes law? You know, you know Senator, for us, um, um, the situation right now, um, I don't see, like I said, I don't see a problem with that. I mean, because our priority is food production. And, um, you know, I mean, you know, on, on Oahu, I mean, that's where the, you know, the markets are. Um, I kind of worry about the, maybe the, like the neighbor islands where, you know, um, and, you know, I big the difference like on, in Kikaha. There's a lot of land um, and we have some small farmers there, but, you know, there's also a lot of vacant lands that, uh, you know, out there. And I, I think that, you know, if hemp takes a, you know, you know, step forward, um, or things like that, you know, I can't anticipate, but for us is like, you know, um, our audit report, I mean, we, on a while, we, um, we put 2000 acres of, um, you know, food production, uh, you know, lands into uh, production for food. Um, and that's, you know, it wasn't 25 years. It was from, you know, 2013 um, to, to the present. And, uh, you know, Senator, you've been out there, you saw in 2016, um, we, we, we did first planning, it was tough. And then, uh, you know, um, if you come out, uh, you know, you're gonna be impressed that you're gonna see most of that land um, occupied and planting. And we have both small, uh, medium and large farmers, you know. So I'm kind of confused about some of the reports um, that, that came out. And <clears throat> one of the in more interesting reports, I think is that you hear a report that if you take the time to read that, I mean, they kind of, you know, uh, hit us, you know, all over the place also, but uh, um, that's a very interesting piece of uh, uh, report. And it talks about moving agriculture forward. And it's not to say that we're, we're gonna neglect um, small farmers or anything like that, but uh, for us, food production is a priority on a while and statewide, but you know, um, so I'll leave it at that. And Jimmy? The question was, if it does pass into law, you will go ahead with the mandate. You'll follow the mandate to fulfill it, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, right. you know, for um, the reporting, reporting, and all that stuff already. I think we've um, 
we've done most of that and we put it online and everything like that so you can you know the data is um, available um if it's not there we'll, we'll soon to um, put it online the tenants and what the acreages and everything else like that i guess my my only other point maybe senator is that um, we should try to put some incentives for for building agriculture you know right now it's like um, forcing the landers to do this you know the department as well um and agriculture, as I said, is a business, so it needs to be economically viable. And uh, that, that's my biggest concern. You know, I mean, it's like no matter what you do, big, small, seed corn, herbs, whatever, small farmers, uh, if it's not economically viable, then, you know, it's not going to uh, it's not going to work. You know, so that's that's my. Right. Thank you, Jimmy. I see that Clayton Kubo is now with us. Uh, Clayton. <clears throat> Mike, please, if you'd like to. Hey, Senator Gabbard, how's it going? Thank you very much for uh, allowing me. Yes, I've been wondering for many, many years now, even talked to the previous um, Department of Agriculture chair about when can, you know, a person like me, you know, go to a farm and, you know, order some food. I've been waiting for this and, you know, hey, hopefully you guys are going to make this happen. Uh, that uh, more small farmers can be, you know, can can get an easier way to lease land and succeed versus, you know, the big seed, uh, multi-billion dollar seed companies. Thank you very much for you guys' time and uh, thank you very much for allowing me and hope you guys uh, enjoy the site. Okay. <laughs> and awesome, being on, being on Zoom, you can do this anywhere so long you get phone signal. Okay. Awesome. And hey, how's it going, Senator Nishihara? How you doing? <laughs> okay. Mahalo. Hey, thank you very much. Stay safe. Aloha. All right. Mahalo. Uh, members, any other questions? I have a question, Jeff. Okay. Who so, uh, with Beth Tokioka. Okay. KIUC. Aloha, Senator. Aloha. So I know that, uh, and we're very sensitive to the fact of what uh, KIUC is trying to accomplish there with um, trying to achieve your um, uh, your targets for, for energy consumption on the island of Kauai. And you noted in your testimony that you're very close to uh, negotiating with ADC on your particular contract. I'm wondering, let's say for chance that the amendment does not happen. Would having a later default date be acceptable to you so that you could finish your negotiation? Because I'm assuming that the reason why you're opposed to this is because the 50% may impact the fact that it's not your your project is not necessarily food production. Is that what? Yes, we it. it our use probably would not be um, strictly recognized as local food production, but the, so the amendment would basically include uses that support local food production. That was our, that was our thought in proposing the amendment, which, you know, this clearly does. Um, I think, you know, we are very hopeful that the lease negotiations will be concluded um, with ADC within the next year. Uh, we don't really control that timeline though. So, um, so it's, um, you know, the, okay. you can't necessarily have a date certain um, when you're dealing with the intricacies. And I know we're finally, we're doing our final due diligence with, uh, with uh, ADC at this time to bring it before their board for conclusion. So I think certainly a longer time frame to get that done before the bill went into effect would certainly help. Um, but it, I, I can't say that, I know that for certain that we would have it done by whatever date is chosen. Right now, just so you know, it's um, January 1, 2022. The right. Date. Yeah. So that's a, a relatively short time frame for these things. Uh, although, again, we would, we would like to have it concluded. We would definitely like to have it concluded by then because we really are trying to move forward as quickly as we can at this point. So, but, but any, any extension in time, I think, would certainly help. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Senator Nishihara. Yeah, as a follow-up to um, Senator Misaluch's question to uh, Ms. Uh, Tokioka, what would be a more reasonable time frame for them to conclude what they're doing? Um, 
I guess I could render an opinion, but it might be Mr. Nakatani might have a better insight into that. I, you know, I would think um, pushing it out an additional year, I would hope would, um, you know, certainly we hope to be in construction in the pro on the project by sometime in 2022. So, um, you know, I think that certainly we'd like our land agreements all settled well before then. Um, but I think it, one more year might be um, safe, uh, but uh, I can't say for sure because a lot of it depends on when um, eight, uh, ADC is satisfied, you know, that we're ready to go to the board. Okay. Thank sure. you. There's a follow-up, Chair. I guess the question might be more relevant to uh, Mr. Toa Nakatani. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Senator. Um, you know, I, I'm not um, privy to that. I've, I've been working on the um, solar thing, um, that project and everything else like that, but um, uh, I don't know the answer to that. You know, it, it's been going, you know, we've been, the kind of changes, horse, you know, the, the horse was changed in the middle of the stream, you know, we had one deal and then it's another company and everything else like that. So uh, power purchase, it's a bit more complicated than it seems. So the answer is I don't, I, I'm not, I couldn't tell you the date, you know. But um, if the, if this bill is amendment to offer a date, it has to be a date of some kind. No. <clears throat> well, I'm more concerned about, um, you know, the, the agriculture production. Um, um, it's not that I ignored the solar project, but, you know, our, our emphasis is more on food production versus power production, you know, so. Um, and we want we want to be part of these, the solution for you know um, KIUC for Kauai and everything else like that. But uh, um, like I said, you know there's um, you know and I don't yeah, but I don't know. It seems like um, uh, what this Tokyo is trying to do and and the benefits they do come to agriculture as far as uh, reservoirs and and energy and those things. So it seems like they will kind of and in glove together at some point. Right. The, the benefits to the agriculture is that um, because they have a power purchase agreement and, you know, they'll be part of the system, you know, I, I think they'll be part of the system is that um, uh, the power they use to, um, in, in agriculture for the pumps, et cetera, like that, especially, you know, um, to kind of, um, uh, to, you know, take some of the cost away from, from you know, lessen the cost of production from um, the, the area and everything like that. Uh, power production in the Kika area has been um, there for a long time. And then, you know, the other purpose might be to, you, you if you don't know that, you know, um, that that whole plane is um, traditionally pumped out. You know, it's a low, it's like a bold, a mana plane. And so it's uh, 24, I don't, I don't think it's now 24 seven, but it's like uh, maybe eight hours a day of pumping um, water from the, to keep the, the water level low. So, you know, that, that's where some of the money goes for and the power goes to, you know. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, moving on to SB 934. Can I ask a question, Chair Gabbard? Sorry, go ahead. Glenn, um, for Jimmy Nakatani, uh, the bill says that you manage 22,000 acres of land, but uh, the bill doesn't say what percentage right now, or your testimony doesn't say, what percentage right now is being used for agriculture? What is that percentage currently? You know, I have a, <clears throat> Senator, I have a, I need to confirm that, but it's like 80% um, of that should be in agriculture right now. Um, maybe not all in um, food production. So if you, you know, the next question is going to be how much is in food production? Um, I don't have that information, but about 80% is in production, you know, so. So when you say production, I, you know, Flowers, hemp, uh, bio. Uh, I can, yeah, I I can give you the information and we'll post it on what you know what um, the production areas are. But I can tell you for Oahu, it's uh, mainly all of um, food production, like two thousand acres of food production and everything. It gets little, um, and I can go to Kikaha and Kauai, and then most of that area is um, cattle. Um, maybe fifteen hundred is in. Um, you know, um, producing timber for um, biomass, 
And so Kikaha is a little different on the on the planes and everything else like that. So, you know, I don't have that information there, you know, um, for Kikaha and everything. But I would say that 80% of the lands are in, in production. I'm, I, I couldn't give you how much information is in food production. I can tell you what it's on Oahu and maybe Kikaha, but I, I don't have the whole picture. Oh, well, I mean, you're ADC. I would think you would have that information available. I mean, is it like half of that 80% is in food production? Or I mean, I can't believe you have you don't have that statistic. I can get that for you, Senator, if you, um, you know, you, um, I can get that information to you. I mean, it's there. I just don't have it before me. OK, this bill is all about egg food production. I can't believe you don't have that in front of you. Uh, well, you know, I, Senator, I, you know, as I said, you know, it's not going to be a, right now for ADC, it's not going to be a, a problem for us um, meeting the 50%. Because whatever we have and whatever we move forward to, um, you know, we intend to say like on Oahu, you know, we intend to put maybe a thousand more acres of uh, agriculture um, product into production. And most of that, you know, food production would be um, the priority. You know, so whether that be cattle, um, whether they veg crop, um, but as, as I said before, whatever you put in needs to be economically viable. So, you know, that's that's the, the other part of the whole thing. You know? okay. And so <clears throat> for us, I mean, right now, I mean, as the bill right now, you know, as the bill's written, it's not going to be an issue for us. I'm just saying that if you look into the future and things change as a crop changes, um, that's my concern that, um, you know, you, you don't want to really paint yourself in a corner and, um, we don't have like, you know, lands on the big island or anything like that. But if you go to the big island, you know, nursery production is really big. And so, you know, we should, and we should focus on someone, you know, like export. Um, we haven't done that, but as you know, I'm convinced that export will make agriculture grow. And I think that's, that's the important ingredient for agriculture to be successful in a way. Well, thank you, Mr. Nakatani. We look forward to seeing in the next committee what exactly of that 80% is in food production. Thank you, Chair Gabbard. Okay. Thank you, members. Moving on to uh, SB 934 relating to measurement standards. Uh, this exempts hydrogen fuels from petroleum product measurement requirements. And first up, we have Scott Glenn from the Hawaii State Energy Office. Aloha, Senator. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm Kirsten Baumgart Turner, Deputy Energy Officer, and I'm here in a place of Scott Glenn. Uh, we want to provide some uh, testimony that we've also provided written in support of this bill. Um, Chair Gabbard and Wakai and, and Vice Chairs and members of the committees the Energy Office supports this because it's a really important element in supporting our 100% uh, renewable energy goals. Hydrogen has a very important role to play in the full portfolio of solutions that it's going to take to get to the 100%. Measures such as this one that remove barriers to the commercial use of hydrogen are supportive of that effort. And it, it helps us to deploy clean energy projects and advance the goals, but it also helps us during this time um, of economic recovery to create jobs. And so removing the barriers removes the, uh, opens the floodgates for opportunities. So thank you very much for allowing us to testify and we stand ready for questions. Mahalo Kirsten. Next is uh, Phyllis Shimabukuro from the uh, Department of Ag. Hello, Chair Gabbard. Uh, the department will stand on its written testimony um, supporting the intent and offering comments. Thank you. Thank you, Morris. Next is Lauren Zerbel from the Hawaii Food Industry Association. Hi, Senator. They're not present. Not present. Next is Thor Toma from Service Pacific. Serve Co Pacific, sorry. Good afternoon and aloha. Thor Toma from Serve Co Pacific. We stand on our written testimony of strong support. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. That's all of the testifiers. Members, are there any questions? I have one for ServCo. Um, 
you had mentioned in your testimony um, that Servco's hydrogen fueling station in Mapunapuna was the first publicly accessible station in Hawaii. What's the status of the station now and how much is it used? Yeah, the uh, station is functional and operational right now. We support approximately 25 uh, uh, fuel cell vehicles that residents own, as well as about five or six vehicles that are used for, for company, uh, company use as well. So the 25 vehicles that are out are actually leased by customers and uh, driven on a daily basis. Okay. Any other questions, members? Okay, moving on to Senate Bill 1248 relating to agricultural enterprises. It authorizes the Department of Ag to plan, design, construct, operate, manage, maintain, repair, demolish, and remove infrastructure on any lands under the jurisdiction of the department and support to support and promote agriculture. It establishes the Agricultural Enterprise Program, establishes the Agricultural Enterprise Special Fund and requires the Board of Ag to annually report an accounting of non-ag ARC lessees to the legislature. Okay, first up is Department of Ag. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard Morisata again for the department. The department will stand on its testimony, but uh, which strongly supports this measure. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that um, the impact of this measure is to uh, allow the department to be, become more nimble in addressing the, the various needs of the agricultural industry. And it, it gives us that flexibility to be able to interact with uh, all facets of agriculture and provide support uh, in all areas that we believe is needed to move it along uh, for you know, a greater uh, role in the economy. Thank you. Thank you, Morris. Next is Emmanuel Zibakalam from the Hawaii Crop Improvement Association. Hello, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee. It's Emmanuel Zibakalam here on behalf of the Hawaii Crop Improvement Association. Uh, we'll stand on our written testimony in support of this measure and answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel. Ryan Miyamoto from Hawaii Farm Bureau. Ryan, are you here? Thank, thank you, Chair. My apologies. We're monitoring the House bill for this exact measure in CPC, so we're testifying on both. Um, uh, good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Chair Wakai, Vice Chair Ishihar, and Solution members of the committee. Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand on its written testimony in strong support of this measure. Thank you, Brian. Next is Scott Enright from Waimea Water Services. Hi, Senator. They're not present. Okay. And that's it on the testifiers. Uh, any questions, members? Okay. Oh, is that a hand up, Senator Rhodes? Oh, okay. I see a little hand there. Weird. Okay. Uh, Senator Wakai, I'll turn it back over to you if you want to, uh, as far as decision making. And okay, members, we're going to take a brief recess <laughs> to the small room for discussion. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, we are reconvening our Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism and our friends from the Committee on Agriculture and Environment for decision making on our three o'clock agenda. The first item on this agenda is Senate Bill 167 relating to the state plan. We heard testimony from a variety of individuals all in support. Um, we think that this is a really good step forward for Hawaii's efforts to uh, combat greenhouse gases. So the chairs, chairs have conferred and the recommendation is to pass SB 167 as is. Members, any questions? If not, Senator Misalucci, I vote yes. Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism as regards to SB 167, Chair recommends pass as is. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Misalucci votes aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Revere. Aye. Senator Favela. 
Aye. Chair, your recommendations adopted. Okay, uh, for AEN, same recommendation. Uh, any discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Nishihara. Aye. Senator Ocasio. Sorry, can't hear you. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Thank you, members. The measure passes. And then moving on to the 305 agenda, uh, joint with our good friends at EET. Uh, SB 335 relating to ag and the ADC. Uh, as we all know, uh, ADC was the focus of a harsh audit. And this chair hopes that ADC takes the criticism to heart and resolves to do a better job. And so the, this bill seeks to get the ADC in folk to focus more on local food production. So chairs, I've con uh, we've conferred and the recommendation will be to pass SB 335 with amendments uh, based on KIUC's testimony that the language in this bill would halt plans for the West Kauai Energy, which would be the world's first solar and pumped storage hydro facility. We'll make a change on page seven, lines 13 to 18 to read uh, C, beginning January 1st, 2022, the Department of Agriculture and Corporation shall annually lease or license at least 50% of land eligible for lease or license or lease or license renewal to agricultural operations whose primary business is food or crop production for local consumption or for purposes that support food or crop production for local consumption. And then the, uh, per the Center for Food Safety, their testimony, we're, we're gonna include their suggestions to make it so that two members of the ADC board should be re representatives of local farmers or ranchers association as nominated by the chairs of the House and Senate Ag Committees and will reduce the number of at-large members from four to two. Also from um, CFS will require the ADC board meetings to be subject to the requirements and procedures that are set forth in chapter 92, part one, the Sunshine Law. And there's also tech amendments. Any discussion? Seeing none, the chair votes aye. Vice Chair Nishihara. Aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Thank you, members. For members of EET saying recommendation to pass this measure with the stated amendments. Any discussion? If not, Senator Misalucha, I vote yes. Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism as regards to Senate Bill 335, Chair recommends pass with amendments. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Revere. Aye. Senator Pabella. Aye. Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Moving on to SB 934 relating to measurement standards dealing with hydrogen fuel. Chairs having conferred, the recommendation will be to pass SB 934 as is. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll take the vote. The chair votes aye. Vice Chair Nishihara? Aye. Senator Ocasio? Aye. Senator Rhodes? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Thank you, members. The measure passes. Members of the ET, same recommendation on Senate Bill 934 to pass as is. Any discussion? If not, Senator Mr. I vote yes. Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism on SB 934, Chair recommends pass as is. Are there any reservations? Any nays? Chair, your recommendations adopted. Thank you. Thank you, members. And we're moving on to the final measure on the 305 agenda. Uh, SB 1248 relating to agricultural enterprises. <laughs> Excuse me. Chair's recommendation will be, um, as Department of Ag states in its testimony, uh, the department needs flexibility in its uh, disposition of public lands to support those changing conditions by allowing and encouraging the use of innovative agricultural models to, to optimize productivity, supporting and promoting agriculture through farmers markets, food hubs, and processing facil facilities, animal feed mills, et cetera, and enabling or providing agricultural educa educational training. So having conferred, the chairs uh, would like to recommend uh, to pass SB 1248 as is. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, the chair votes aye. Senator, Vice Chair. Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Aye. Senator Acasio. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Thank you, members. The measure passes. The members of EET same recommendation to pass SB 1248 as is. Any discussion? If not, Senator Mr. Lucha, I vote yes. For Senate Bill 1248, Chair recommends pass unamended. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Lee? Aye. Senator Revere? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Your recommendation for adopted, Chair. Okay, I think that's it, Chair. Aloha, everyone. Have a wonderful long weekend. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you, everyone. Aloha. 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 Thank you for your patience. We would like to convene the Joint Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism and our friends from the Labor, Culture and Arts Committee for the 310 agenda. We are kind of on time. Uh, at least we got the date right, February 12th, uh, Friday. We have one measure on this agenda, Senate Bill 1023 relating to taxation. On our testifiers list, we have Kurt Cottrell from DLNR. Good morning, um, sorry, good afternoon, Chairs Wakai, uh, Chair Taniguchi. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Kurt Cottrell, Administrator, Division of State Parks. We stand in, in strong support of, of this measure. Any support that can be provided toward one of our most you know, iconic uh, state park buildings that has such significant value for our host culture is, is greatly appreciated. Within the context that we are in complete understanding of the, the current uh, condition of the TAT and its its uncertainty and the fact that it will remain uncertain for a, a certain period of time uh, with that understanding if there's any way to enable this legislation with the understanding that at some point in the future if if and when we reboot the visitor industry that some consideration would be to to channel some of the TAT toward uh, Iolani Palace. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Kurt. Alan Carpenter from GLNR. Same testimony. Oh, okay, Kurt and Alan all in one. Melanie Ide from the Bishop Museum. Good afternoon, Senator and uh, members of the committee. Thank you very much for hearing this bill. Um, I'm president and CEO of Bishop Museum and I'm also here to stand on um, strong support on our written testimony and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Kaiwi Yoon from Bishop Museum. Uh, Vice President of Operations Planning and Program Management. I'm here to answer any questions if you have them. Um, Thank you, Mr. Yoon. Paula O'Connor from Iolani Palace. Has... Hi, aloha. I stand on our testimony. Um, you know, we, as all of our museums and cultural places here in Hawaii knows, we've all struggled with COVID and um, this, this would help us immensely in, as we continue to preserve and protect Iolani Palace. Um, so I stand by my testimony and, I, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Paula. Uh, Tom Yamachika, Tax Foundation. Uh, thank you, Chair and Senators. Tom Yamachika from the Tax Foundation. Uh, we have submitted brief written testimony, uh, basically, with, and with all uh, respect to our uh, cultural museums, uh, Bishop Museum, Iolani Palace, uh, we don't think that an earmark off the transient accommodations tax, or any tax for that matter, uh, is an appropriate way of funding anything. It does decrease transparency and accountability. Uh, and we think it should be budgeted for like any other expense in the state budget. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Tom. And we have all supportive testimony from the following. Mark Kalahele, 
from the Friends of Iolani Palace, Kirsten Faulkner from Historic Hawaii Foundation, Terry Skillman from the Hawaii Arts Alliance, Pono Shim from Oahu Economic Development, and a board member of Iolani Palace, Richard Kennedy, Cheryl B., Deborah Ward, Kekoa Kulihiba, Brian K. Aloha, and Mark Shakoff. All of those individuals just mentioned have submitted testimony and support. Members, any questions for those who are online? Uh, no, I got the information from the folks. Okay, uh, stand by everyone. We're gonna go into the little room for decision making. Okay. Research room is opening up. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we're reconvening our Committee on Economic Development, uh, Energy Economic Development, Tourism, and our good friends from the Labor and Culture and Arts Committee. Just like that, voila, senators grew like mushrooms in this room. And we're all, we're all uh, here and in, in present. Uh, here to discuss Senate Bill 1023 regarding taxation. It's a bill to help Iolani Palace and Bishop Museum by dedicating some of the TAT funds uh, to their good work. Uh, the two chairs have conferred, and you know, based on Iolani Palace's um, a deficit of sixty thousand dollars a month, it's going to multiply that out uh, twelve times, and going to actually have a fixed amount instead of the percentage that's outlined in the bill. That fixed amount for Iolani Palace will be seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and based on uh, Bishop Museum having twice as many visitors as Iolani Palace. We'll put in a figure of $1.5 million to assist uh, Bishop Museum uh, through these uh, funds from, from TAT. So those are the recommendations for the amendments to, to the bill. Members, any discussion? If not, Senator Misalucha, I vote yes. Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism as it relates to Senate Bill 1023, Chair, Recommends pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Misalucha votes aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Revere. Aye. Senator Pavella. Aye. Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Thank you. Uh, same recommendation for the Committee on uh, Labor and Culture and the Arts. Um, yeah, I'll be calling for the vote for. Um, the chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 1023 with amendments. Chair Taniguchi. Aye. Vice Chair Ihara votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator Kyoho Kaloli is excused. Senator Favela. Aye. The recommendation is adopted. Great. Thank you very much, Senators. We're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>
This establishes a clean ground transportation goal for state agencies converting to zero emissions vehicles by December 31st, 2030 and testifying first, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, SB 774. You do have to go through this, I suppose. Um, relating transportation provides tax credit for installation of electric vehicle charging infrastructure. I'll note chair's intent to defer this measure. Um, so we do have testimony from uh, Department of Taxation with comments. We'll stand on our written testimony, chairs. Thank you. Tax Foundation with comments. Mission of Hawaii in support. Avis Budget Group in opposition. Hawaii EV in support. Hawaii EV Association. And on our testimony. Thank you. Ulu Puno Initiative in support. NIOP in support. Blue Planet Foundation in support. We'll stand on our testimony, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Hawaii State Energy Office. Stand on our testimony in support. Thank you. Enterprise Holdings. We'll stand on our testimony in opposition, Chair. Thank you. We also have additional testimony from five individuals, all in support. Um, that said, we'll move on, uh, unless anyone has any questions. That said, we'll move on to the next measure, SB 920, relating to state light duty vehicles, which establishes clean, clean ground transportation goals for state agencies of December 31, 2030. Testifying first in this measure is the State Procurement Office with comments, Department of Hi, Accounting Senator. and General Hi, Services. Hi, Senator, not present. Thank you. Uh, in support, Department of Transportation. In support, uh, 350 Hawaii in support, Mission Zero Hawaii in support, Hawaii EV in support, Hawaii EV Association in support, uh, uh, Ulupono Initiative. Good afternoon, Chairs. Uh, Ulupono will stand on its testimony in strong support. Thank you. Thank you. Hawaiian Electric. Hawaiian Electric stands on its testimony in support. Thank you. Thank you. Hawaii State Energy Office. Uh, Hawaii State Energy Office stands on its testimony in support. Thank you. Thank you. Blue Planet Foundation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Blue Planet Foundation is in support of this measure. We do offer an amendment hoping to expand this to all private vehicles, uh, similar to what California has done by executive order by 2035. Um, we don't think it's enough, although it's a great start to focus on state fleets, but we really need a clear deadline for uh, gas powered vehicles uh, statewide. Thanks for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Alliance for Automotive Innovation in support and an additional four individuals all in support. And just to be clear, because I don't want anyone to be skipped, did we miss anybody who is online with us on 920? If not, uh, thank you. Are there any questions? If not, all right, thank you. Moving on to the last bill on the agenda, SB 987 relating to greenhouse gas emissions convenes a sustainable aviation fuel task force within the state energy office to develop plans to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Testifying first is the Office of Planning. Good afternoon. Happy Aloha Friday, Senators. The Office of Planning offers comments and five amendments to the proposed bill. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is the state energy office. Aloha Senators. Aloha Senators, um, we appreciate the opportunity to provide comments on this bill. While the intent of it is really excellent, uh, there is work that is being done by the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute through funding from the FAA for uh, aviation fuels uh, R&D. And this task force would add a considerable uh, amount of work to the energy office for which we don't currently have the resources to support. So that is of concern of us, particularly under the current economic situation and the hiring freeze. So mahalo for the opportunity to provide comments. Thank you. Up next, uh, we have Americans for Democratic Action in support, Emul Alliance in support, Hawaii or 350 Hawaii in support and additional comment or additional support from two individuals. That is all the testimony we have on this measure. Are there any questions? If not, um, thank you very much, everyone. So uh, again, my apologies for the tight time frame. Uh, there'll be plenty more opportunities for robust discussion as things continue. But uh, at this time, why don't we recess and take us into uh, the decision-making little room.
One. Okay, good afternoon. We're reconvening the Joint Committees on Transportation on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism for decision-making on our 3.30 p.m. agenda. We have three bills on the agenda. Up first is SB 774 relating to transportation, which provides a tax credit for the installation of EV infrastructure for rental cars and makes a transition. Um, and I, I really wanna thank all the testifiers for participating in this one. I'll just note that we did hear a substantially uh, similar in intent bill just the other day and have that up for decision-making coming up. And we wanna carry on the conversation in that bill. So for the time being, we'll be deferring this measure. Moving on to SB 920 relating to state light duty vehicles. This establishes clean ground transportation goals for state agencies to achieve 100% light duty motor vehicles in a 100% zero emission fleet by 2030. Um, appreciate the work that the committees have put into this one. We'd like to move it forward. Uh, chairs having conferred, making a couple amendments uh, that are technical in nature and non-substantive. And this would move on to the Ways and Means Committee for further discussion. So any comments or questions on this? Is this the um, amendment that was recommended? Uh, there was an amendment recommended by, uh, was that procurement? Is that under consideration? You know, we looked at that, but okay. did not adopt that because that sort of defeats the whole purpose of the, the bill. And okay. it took out the date, right? They yeah, they the took out all, out. basically all the substantive stuff. No, not really. They're just the dating, the date paragraph. Yeah. Yeah, but the date is important. That's the goal. If you yeah. take out the goal, then it must have the bill. Okay, so recommendate, recommendation to pass with amendments. Okay. For the Committee on Transportation, the Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 920 with amendments. Uh, Chair Lee. Aye. Vice Chair goes, aye. Senator English, I believe he's in on flight. Uh, Senator Shimabukuro. Excused. Excused. And Senator Favela. Aye. Yeah, measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. For members of EET, same recommendation to pass this measure with technical amendments. Any discussion? If not, Senator Visalucho, I vote yes. Senate Bill 920, Chair recommends pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Misa Lucha votes aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Riviere. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair, your recommendations adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the final measure, SB 987, relating to greenhouse gas emissions, which convenes a sustainable aviation fuel task force in the Energy Office. Um, we'd like to move this forward, but making some amendments. First of all, um, because the energy office does have a lot on its plate, according to their testimony, we would like to look to the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute as the convener uh, for this discussion, but still maintain the energy office as a member. So if they wanna participate, they're, they're able to. Um, secondly, we just wanna really clean the thing up and consolidate. So we'll um, make it a uh, very simple clean aviation task force looking at uh, you know, future electric and zero emissions air travel and cleaner fuels along the way in the meantime, reporting back to the legislature on recommendations and progress. Um, secondly, uh, with the membership, we wanna note that federal agencies, we cannot compel to show up. So rather than that, we'll invite them along with um, the other stakeholders and add in to be sure um, the provision that the task force itself can invite whomever else they feel is appropriate as necessary. And then tech amendments. Chair's recommendation on SB 987 is to pass with amendments. Chair Lee. Aye. Uh, Vice Chair goes aye. Senator English and Senator Shimabukura excuse Senator Favela. Aye. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. For members of EET, same recommendation to pass this measure with amendments. Any discussion? We've seen and heard none, Chair. Uh, excuse me, uh, Senator Mr. Lucia, I vote yes. Senate Bill 987 for Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism. Chair recommends pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Misa Lucha votes aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Riviere. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Measures adopted, Chair. Thank you. Thank you everybody for your patience and due diligence. Thanks to the good committee on EET for, for everything. We are adjourned. Thank you.